By 1997, the British video game developer Codemasters has already made a name for itself. Up to this point, they had released many games under multiple genres, but racing was where they really shined. That year, they would release the first installment in what would be one of their longest running video game series. Toka Touring Car Championship was released for the PC in November of 1997. It was also released on the PlayStation platforms in late 1997 in Europe. People in the United States would have to wait until the summer of 1998 to purchase this game. It featured all of the licensed cars and tracks from the 1997 British Touring Car Championship. The game was critically acclaimed by the European game press, and it was considered to be the best in its genre until the release of Gran Turismo several months later, receiving Metacritic scores of 83 and 75% on both the PS1 and PC. In Europe of December of 1998, Toka 2 Touring Cars was released. Once again, for the PC and PlayStation 1. It was mainly an annual franchise update of Cars and Tracks. The game added more detailed graphics, physics, multiplayer modes, and other minor features. The British Touring Car Championship was once again the very base of the game, but this time being the 1998 season. The level of damage you got during a race was enhanced, and for a racing game at the time, this was a pretty awesome feature. It became a significant selling point compared with the likes of Grand Gran Turismo, which at the time had no damage model. The first two Toka releases were critically acclaimed across the boards in North America and Europe. The only difference is, is that they sold a whole lot more copies in Europe. For the third Toka release that would be coming in the year 2000, they wanted to do something a little bit different. First off, the third edition wasn't going to have the British Touring Car Championship. This alienated some fans, but ultimately in the end, it really didn't matter. The series made a significant change in featuring various touring car championships from all across the world. The gameplay also felt a bit more arcadey compared to the first two. It was trying to appeal more to the casual player rather than the hardcore one. And unlike the first two, this was released on just one platform, the PS1. There was no PC edition. The game offers gamers a wide range of racing challenges plus some of the best car physics and physical damage you've seen for a racing game at the time. While the series was critically acclaimed for multiple years in both Europe and North America, selling copies was a much different story. Codemasters were not particularly satisfied with the sales numbers in North America. To help combat this, the North American edition for the third installment of the Toka series would be a lot different. Looking to increase its numbers in the North American market, they would go with a much different title. Even though the game was full of multiple touring cars from across the world, Codemasters decided to name the third edition in North America Jarrett Labani Stock Car Racing. Talk about a desperate sales ploy. There are absolutely no stock cars nor ovals in this game, yet they decided to call it Jarrett Labani Stock Car Racing. And I guess in America it makes perfect sense. By 2000, Dale Jarrett was the defending Cup Series champion while Terry had won his a few seasons prior. Only one slight catch, however. It wouldn't be these two. It would be the other two. We all know racing games claim to be real. This is a car from our game, and this is a car from a competitor's game. Look, no matter how hard it's hit, their car shows no damage. They call that real. Now this is real damage. Other games just can't match the real-to-life, engine-burning, auto-body-crushing damage that Jarrett Labonte Stock Car Racing delivers. Rated E for everyone. Jarrett Labonte Stock Car Racing. Keep racing real. Okay, what? There's a lot to unpack here. So Jason Jarrett and Justin Labani do, in fact, have their very own video game. The Jarrett Labani name by the year 2000 had been pretty well known up to this point, especially in stock car racing. You also have to remember NASCAR was insanely popular around this time as well, and Codemasters had hinged off of NASCAR's success in the hopes that people wouldn't look and perhaps buy their game. And when I say wouldn't look, I mean Codemasters hoping NASCAR fans wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a stock car racing game and a touring cars game. Let's take a look at the results. Taking the victory, Jason Jarrett. 
Is that Ned Jarrett doing the commentary? Oh yeah, Ned Jarrett does commentary in this game too. Now if you're asking what became of the careers of Jason Jarrett and Justin Labonte if you didn't know, well let me give you a rundown. While his dad would become a Winston Cup Series champion, Jason Jarrett's Cup Series career wound up only being two career Cup Series starts. He made a total of 40 starts in four seasons in the then called NASCAR Bush Series. He didn't notch a single top 10 finish in those four years and in that same time span as well, he also racked up 16 DNQs. It's safe to say he was probably one of the biggest busts in NASCAR Busch Series history. In ARCA, it was a lot different. He ended up notching two career ARCA Series wins by 2004. But ultimately, his career is always going to be in the shadows of his famous grandfather and father. As for the other cover driver, Justin Labonte's career had a similar path. While his career is similar in some aspects, it's also very different. Justin Labonte's first his 22 career Busch Series start saw him fail to notch a single top 10 finish. But Justin Labonte was back in the fold by 2004. He was driving for his famous father Terry and actually ended up scoring an upset victory in 2004 at Chicagoland. This would be his only win and top 5 finish. 2005 would be Justin Labonte's first and only full time season and in all 35 races he only scored two top 10 finishes. having more DNFs that season with a total of seven. So you see where I'm coming from? This alone makes this one of the most confusing motorsports games in history. Not only are there no stock cars nor ovals in the game as we stated earlier, but we have two obscure stock car drivers on the cover of this game, who are clearly only on the cover because of their last names. And the crazy thing about all of this is despite the questionable marketing efforts, the game is actually pretty freaking good. For the PS1, it's one of the best racing games you could possibly play, a plethora of tracks and brands from around the world to race from, as well as pretty good car customization for its time. It has all the elements that make it a pretty good racing game, unfortunately it's just tied in with questionable marketing efforts. Fortunately Codemasters never did that sort of thing ever again. Even though the series has been rebranded over the years, it has not been rebranded to the levels of that. Codemasters rebranded the series to Toka Race Driver up until 2006. By 2008 with the next gen consoles, they rebranded to Race Driver Grid, which is now formally known as the Grid series today. The last game to release in the series was 2019, and even though it has been critically acclaimed throughout the years, one of its major flaws throughout the entire series has also always been its marketing. And this was none more prevalent than when they decided to name the game Jarrett Labonte Stock Car Racing, making this the most random motorsports game in history. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.